All right, well, it's 6.30, so we'll get this kicked off. Um, so welcome to the uh, construction meeting for the 2019 Roadway Rehabilitation Project. Uh, so we separated this one. If you guys have come to previous meetings, we had Marsh Creek in here with you, but we decided to separate these ones since uh, this construction on Upper Afton Road in Meadowood is going to be uh, a little bit different than the Marsh Creek. Um, so rather than having you guys listen to this, each other's uh, presentations, we separated them and um, this will be more specific on um, kind of the, the significant impacts that's going to be occurring on uh, both Meadowood and Upper Afton Road. So um, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Mike Hanna. Um, I work for the City of Woodbury in the Engineering Department. Um, along here with me we have Jeff Tutant from uh, Bolton & Mank, uh, one of the consultants who will be on site quite a bit. Uh, Jamie will be on site as well with uh, Bolton & Mank and our City Engineer Tony Kutsky. Um, and I think you all met Doug out there. Uh, he's also with the City of Woodbury as one of our project coordinators. Um, and out there you had the sign-up sheets um, and there are some notifications for uh, InTouch, um, which is a, a service that uh, I'd recommend signing up for and um, something that we're going to go over here um, to, in order to stay um, in touch with the communication for this project. Uh, one thing about construction is it changes always. Um, and so really, we're going to give you some general dates here. Um, of course, they're, they're going to change. We can essentially guarantee that because it's impossible to predict weather and um, different um, challenges that we're going to encounter in construction. Um, so the best way to stay um, in touch or um, updated through the project is through the um, in touch notification, which had a little uh, sign up sheet out there. Not sign up sheet, but a little half a sheet um, that gave you instructions on how to sign up. And we'll go over that a little bit later too. Uh, but essentially, the project communication is what we consider to be probably the most important part of this project. Um, there's going to be some very significant construction impacts and and restricted access that um, we're just going to need to make sure we inform everybody um, of what expectations are um, and you know when and when you will not have access to driveways and streets and uh, businesses in the area. Um, so we'll kind of go over that in this presentation um, along with the, the phasing and the schedule. Um, again, this is all subject to change. This is uh, going to be very general. Um, we, we know the start date and that's going to be about the extent of what we know for now for um, as far as what we anticipate for construction. Uh, we're going to go over what to expect for this construction project. There's going to be some um, street re rehabilitation and some utility work as well. Um, and then we'll go over some frequently asked questions and then after that we'll open it up to any questions, anything that we haven't covered yet. Um, so project communication. So uh, as I was talking about before, this in touch is the best way to stay informed. And I guess before um, you start taking notes and, and jotting all this down, this will all be posted online, this entire presentation, um, along with this video. So um, if you forgot about anything that, that I had mentioned, um, feel free, you can record, uh, go back and um, rewind and, and watch it again. Um, so this in touch, uh, this is kind of what it's going to look like when you um, get to the page. So there's instructions out on the table, but um, there's a, a button at the top of the Woodbury, City Woodbury web page. When you click that, you'll get to this page and you'll enter your name, email address. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can check for the 2019 Roadway Rehabilitation Project. Um, and then you hit subscribe and you'll get weekly notifications as far as where we're at with construction, um, phasing, um, any changes in the schedule. Um, so that's going to be the most important way uh, for you all to stay informed. Um, so again, this is just kind of the, the specific instructions on how to sign up for it. Um, we, we talk about this a lot because it is very important. Um, a lot of the questions that we get asked um, are answered through this in touch. So, um, again, feel free to contact uh, the city or the, the hotline if you have any other questions during construction. But a lot of the answers are going to come from this in touch. Um, so, as I was talking about, there are some other ways. So, this project website, this is where the presentation is going to be posted. Um, so, this woodburymn.gov road rehab 2019. So, this is where we'll have the presentation, where we'll have the video, um, we have the phasing maps. Uh, we have all the, the most useful information that you're going to need um, at the time. So we'll, it'll be updated with all the in-touch notifications too as those come along. Um, so that might be a good website to bookmark if you're curious as far as um, how's construction going. Um, door hangers, I know any of you in the Meadowood area have probably gotten some door hangers um, if you're in the, the utility work on Meadowood. Um, and so these are going to give you really specific information on uh, what to expect and, and how to prepare for the construction. So this will give you the information as far as um, if there's any curb that's going to be removed, uh, when the pavement is going to be removed, 
Um, and those big details that, that uh, really we can't, we won't really know when they're gonna affect you until a few weeks out. So that's where the door hangers are gonna give you. Um, and then the project, the project hotline, this is the number that is gonna be the most useful for you to call with any construction questions. Um, so this is something that um, is gonna be very useful on a project like this where, um, like I had said, there's gonna be some restricted access. Um, there's gonna be some significant impacts on, on some people's properties. Um, and so um, if you're curious as far as, you know, what's the impact gonna be on my, my yard, uh, what my, my landscaping and things like that, um, this is the hotline uh, that's gonna go directly to Bolton and Mank, who's our consultant, and they'll be out in the field, um, and they'll be able to answer your question um, quickly and uh, give you the best information. So this is the proposed phasing. Um, again, this is posted online um, on that uh, 2019 Road Rehab website. Um, so construction's gonna start next week, actually, in Meadowood, and we had a meeting with some of the residents there this week um, to go over what the expectations are for that. Um, and they've all received door hangers. Um, and then on Upper Afton Road, construction is going to start May 6th. Um, and Upper Afton Road uh, will have full closure in the, the affected area. So uh, phase A will be May through June. Um, they will, the road will be closed uh, except to local traffic um, May through June, uh, about seven to nine weeks. And there's, uh, there's some boards that are out there that are gonna be updated as uh, construction changes. So like I said, the, the Meadowood construction phasing, uh, Meadowood's gonna, it's not as really a phase, it's the whole project is gonna take seven to nine weeks. Um, and that's gonna include uh, curb replacement and uh, utility work. So the first week um, is gonna be, you know, the, you'll see signs put up in the area um, and they'll be bringing all their equipment and things. And then they're gonna start on the storm sewer replacement right away. Um, and we had a meeting, uh, like I said, on Monday where we kind of walked through the project. If you have any specific questions, um, it would probably be easiest to just talk to one of us at the end of this meeting um, because there's going to be some significant impacts to just a few property owners in this for the storm sewer. Um, and then after the, the utility work is done, they'll do some uh, spot curb replacement in this area. Um, so the curb has been marked. Um, if you have uh, white marks on your curb, that means that they're going to be uh, replacing that curb. So... Um, that takes uh, one to two weeks for them to replace the curb. And then um, if there's curb in front of your driveway, they're gonna end up cutting into your driveway three or four feet. Um, and they'll come back and they'll patch that. Um, and then after they finish all the curb work, they'll get into removing the pavement on the road um, and then grading it and uh, paving the, the first layer. And then after they've paved the first layer, they'll do some topsoil work and seeding and then they'll uh, go ahead and pave the final layer. Um, Upper Afton Road uh, is going to be similar uh, timeline, six to eight weeks per phase is about what we're expecting. Um, the first week, again, will be the, the traffic control. They'll put up the signs, barricades, things like that, since the road will be closed. Um, and then they're going to get started on the underground utilities. And so we'll show you a picture here in a little bit of kind of what we're expecting for the underground utilities and why the, the road will be closed. Um, they'll end up having to dig pretty deep. so. Um, it's, it's a pretty significant impact that we're going to be having on this, this road, so um, that's why we, we're not allowed to, we're, we can't keep it open and allow them to do the work. Um, so after they have uh, replaced the utilities, they'll go ahead and, and uh, excavate any more street, um, and they'll start grading it, and then um, they'll place the bottom layer of pavement, um, and then they're going to go ahead and uh, restore the turf. So the one thing on Upper Afton Road, uh, most of the road is going to, after they finish the phase, they're only going to do the, the bottom layer of pavement. Until the very end, they're going to come back and do the last um, lift of pavement. And the reason for that is uh, they're going to have a lot of uh, heavy vehicles. They're going to need to use the road throughout construction. And rather than you know, damage a, a brand new final mat, they're going to um, you know, do some minor damage to the, the, under, the lower level of pavement and then they'll come in and they'll put the top layer on and, and seal everything off and, and you'll get a good final product. Uh, curb replacement, so Upper Afton Road will have um, extensive curb replacement. Essentially, all the curb on Upper Afton Road is gonna be replaced. Um, Meadowood area, so there's spot curb removal um, and then there's gonna be some areas where we'll have some full curb removal where they're replacing the storm sewer um, and those have all been marked in the field already. 
Um, and again, we met with a lot of the homeowners that are in those areas. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and play this video here. Um, if you've been to the, some of these meetings before, you've seen this video, um, but hopefully now you kind of get an understanding of what to expect um, as far as um, construction impacts. Every year, the city improves sections of neighborhood streets and a variety of areas of Woodbury. Most of the roads are in residential areas, which are why city staff conducts a series of neighborhood meetings, open houses, and public hearings related to the roadway rehabilitation project. Residents attending these meetings have the opportunity to learn about the construction process, special assessments and funding, how it will impact them, and ask questions about the project. Special assessments are a charge imposed for improvements that benefit nearby properties. The amount of the charge bears a direct relationship to the benefit the property receives and is based on the city's assessment policy. Assessments are used as a partial project funding source in addition to general tax revenues and other sources. Once the project is formally approved by City Council, construction begins. The first step in the process is removing portions of the old pavement. A milling machine proceeds slowly down the street as it removes the top surface of the pavement, leaving a rough but drivable surface. In most cases, the roads remain open to traffic through the milling process. Depending on the location of the project, utility improvements might be done in conjunction with the roadway work. These improvements include sewers, water mains, natural gas lines, and communication cables. Utility work requires extensive digging and usually results in temporary lane or roadway closures. Motorists should be aware of detours in these areas. All projects involve curb and gutter work. Approximately one week before curb construction, sections are evaluated and marked for removal. If your curb needs replaced, you will be notified and given information on how it will impact your residence. During construction, any irrigation systems, dog fences, or other private features within the right-of-way will have to be moved by the property owner. Asphalt driveways damaged during curb replacement will be patched. Damaged concrete driveways will be removed and replaced. Curb work will also impact your lawn. The contractor will replace disturbed areas with seed and hydro mulch. The contractor will care for the area for 30 days. Residents are encouraged to water and care for the areas to achieve the best results. Once curb work is completed, it cannot be driven over for five to seven days. Prior to final paving, the street surface will be thoroughly swept. After this step, the final pavement process will begin. Before the new asphalt is laid, tack oil is applied to the road. Residents should avoid driving on the tack oil because it can stick to driveways and vehicles. With the tack oil in place, crews will then begin the paving process. After the new asphalt is rolled and has cooled, it is immediately ready to use. If you have any questions regarding the project process, assessments, or the scope of the project proposed for your neighborhood, please contact the City of Woodbury Engineering Department at 651-714-3593. All right, so hopefully that gave you a general overview of what to expect with this construction project. Um, so I guess as far as what to expect with this uh, construction, so as I was saying before, the schedule is, is going to change. Um, the weather and everything that we can't control um, will definitely alter the schedule. Um, and in touch is probably the best way to stay informed and, and get up-to-date schedules as, as things change. Um, this is going to be an inconvenience. Uh, as, as I was saying, Upper Afton Road will be closed. Uh, we will allow access to the, uh, to the businesses and the church and the, the residents in the area. Um, but as far as through traffic, um, it's going to be um, just not passable. And um, even in the businesses in the area, we're going to need to have very close contact with them to make sure that they're um, informing their customers and, and whoever that uh, how, th how to get into their road um, because it's going to be closed from one direction or another on Upper Afton Road for, for a couple weeks. 
Um, and in the construction area, so when they're doing this work, there's going to be gravel. Um, it, the gravel road is, is okay to drive on in areas, you know, like Meadowwood, after they replace the storm sewer, they'll leave a, a gravel surface. Um, and that's all, it's fine to dri drive on, it's essentially just a gravel road, um, but it's going to kick up a lot of dust. So if you're planning on replacing windows or doing any kind of work like that, I would suggest waiting until after the construction is done in your area. Um, construction zone safety. Um, again, they, these guys, they've, they've, the contractor works in residential neighborhoods. Um, they're, they're certainly aware that there are children and everything in the area, but um, be aware that there's large equipment and, and um, lots of things happening and um, be aware, you know, they're, they're trying to get in and out as fast as they can. And um, the more that we can do to be patient with them, the, the better we'll all be. So, um, and again, resident access, it's going to kind of vary depending on where you're at. Um, some areas of Meadowwood, you're, you're always going to have access. Uh, there's some people on Meadowwood where um, there's going to be some times where it's going to be a challenge and you're going to have to probably park on the street for, for some time. Um, and those are things that we will go over more deeply with the door hanger notices. Um, that's going to have the best information as far as how your access is going to be limited and, and how you're going to be able to get to your house. Um, and the communication so for a project like this where you know, the things are changing real fast and um, there's some big impacts, the hotline is the best way to get the information that you need. So um, save this number uh, on your phone. Um, it's going to be a very important one. This is going to be the best number to, to get the answers that I'm sure most of you will be looking for. So um, with that, I'll, I'll kick it over to Jeff and he'll go over kind of the construction process and uh, what to expect uh, for each of the construction items that we're going to run into. Thanks, Mike. Um, as Mike had mentioned earlier, my name is Jeff Dutant. I've been involved with the rehab projects in town for quite a few years now. I'm going to talk a little bit through uh, what you see in some of these photos and some of the things to expect as this uh, construction progresses through your neighborhood. These couple pictures here, as you can see, there's going to be a lot of impact with this work. The majority of Meadowwood is going to be more similar to what you saw in the video. Uh, Meadowwood is going to be uh, spot curb uh, removal and replacement with one segment that's getting some storm sewer replacement that's gonna run up one side of the road. So we did have a separate field meeting with the residents impacted by that storm sewer. So they're aware of what the impacts are gonna be and how that's gonna affect their uh, access. This is more typical of what you're gonna see if you look, try to look down Upper Afton Road once Afton Road gets closed. So you can kinda of see why we're gonna to have to close this road as they have this large equipment out there. Um, we're gonna be putting uh, new uh, utilities down the center of the road. So there's going to be no way to be able to get through. There'll be a full closure on each end of where they're doing this type of work. And then you will see Upper Afton Road will have a detour that's set up that sends people down around um, to Valley Creek Road. And then uh, back up Weir Century. Um, so if you think you're going to be able to cut through, this should be a good picture of what you're going to see. So don't think you're going to be able to get through these areas when they're closed. Uh, with the Upper Afton Road work, we're going to be replacing every, uh, the water main and everybody's water service up to the edge of their uh, property line, basically. For us to be able to do that and maintain water service to the homes in that area, we've got to set up a temporary water system. So what you're going to see is you're going to see some pipes running in the yards and maybe along the edge of the street um, that the contractor will set up. He has to do some testing on them pipes. Um, so they'll be set up for a little while before we do make switches to providing temporary water to your homes. Now that temporary water connection will involve a excavation or a dig up in the uh, front of your home if your home fronts Upper Afton Road. Or I should say, if your water service is off of Upper Afton Road. So there will be excavation right in your front yard. The contractor has gone through and looked at some of these. There will be some tree impacts. Most of it is going to be a matter of maybe trimming a few branches off a tree. Um, but you should get more details if we're affecting your tree. We'll talk to um, or give notification to them homeowners specifically. Uh, one more thing on that pipe before I forget. Um, that pipe where it does cross driveways, it will be ramped up so you'll be able to drive over that pipe to get into your homes. Uh, back to uh, spot curb replacement, which will be happening on the Meadowood area. The spot curb replacement, the arrows will point in towards the curb getting replaced. This has kind of been described on a notice that's already gone out to residents in this area. Uh, the disturbance when we do this work, there's going to be a saw cut at each one of these lines. We're going to disturb about 
I'll say about three feet, three to five feet behind uh, that curb panel and about one foot either way from where them arrows are. Any irrigation systems, dog fence that's in that area, if you want to try to protect it, uh, the recommendation would be to dig it up and pull it back. A couple more examples of what it looks like during the spot curb removal and replacement process. You can kind of see how the contractor works his way down the street doing removals. Um, and then I'll follow behind the same day or the following day with placing the concrete. In some areas of Meadowood, uh, residents will be receiving the temporary mailbox system, similar to what you see in the upper left corner. Uh, this will be provided for any of the mailboxes that are along um, Upper Afton Road also. So when you get a door hanger notice before we start construction in your neighborhood, that will give you details on, on where to expect this to be set up. Or you might see uh, the contractor doing this, the temporary mailbox systems. I think they've also gone ahead and done their own separate notification to some of the residents also. The large pieces of equipment you see here are probably about the biggest ones you're gonna see on the project. These are the ones that are used to grind up and basically pulverize the existing pavement surface. Lots of this large equipment that's gonna be out on the site, are, uh, the people operating it, um, they do have a lot of blind spots where they can't see around them. So definitely be careful when you're uh, outside and around this type of equipment. If you see any kids, uh, if you have any kids that wanna go outside and play, uh, try to keep them away from this equipment while the larger equipment's out front. I know it's kind of neat to see and cool to see, but make sure they stand back and uh, see it from a distance. On Upper Afton Road, the entire length of it is going to be full curb replacement. So here's an example of the disturbance. You can kind of see there's an area about three to five feet typically behind the machine curb that's disturbed. Um, also, you see there's a couple of driveways that are uh, saw cut a little bit farther back for them to be able to complete the installation of that curb. And here's a close up of a driveway. On the right side would be a driveway where we were doing full curb replacement. And the areas we're doing full curb replacement, the uh, driveway will be saw cut approximately five feet back. Um, that'll vary, I'll say, if you're on the side of the upper Afton that has a sidewalk. Um, it'll be farther back if you're on the sidewalk side because our trail side because we will be replacing that uh, trail as part of this project also. The new concrete can be driven over. Typically it's about five days after it's placed. So you'll get details in that in that door hanger notice that goes out exactly how many days you gotta wait and one of the things that it says in there to look for is the contractor will put like a ribbon across the driveway uh, when he installs a concrete and that'll get removed once the concrete has hardened to a point where it's safe to drive vehicles over it. The picture on the left is an example of a spot curb replacement area uh, where there was in front of a driveway. If you live in one of these areas, the, if it's an asphalt driveway, there will be a socket about two feet behind the existing curb. That area will be patched in with, this, with the asphalt. If you have a concrete driveway, typically in a spot curb we can remove them concrete panels without disturbing the concrete driveway. So there shouldn't be any impact to your driveway. If your driveway does get impacted and it's a concrete driveway, we would replace your concrete driveway to the first joint behind the uh, concrete panels of the curb. The equipment here is doing compaction and uh, kind of grading or tolerancing of the gravel base, prepping for paving. On this project, you're gonna see a lot of equipment similar to the one on the right. It's a type of compaction equipment. You're gonna see similar equipment when they're doing paving operations. This equipment does vibrate the ground quite a bit. You will feel it in your homes. So if you have any valuables that are on your walls that you're uh, really concerned about, you may wanna take them down just to make sure they don't fall off the walls. It's typically not a problem, but it's something that you should think about if you have something that uh, you're really concerned about. A lot of people ask about foundations with all this vibration that they feel in their homes. Uh, it's not typically a problem with the vibration that travels through the ground. You'll feel it in there, but it's not enough to cause any damage to the concrete uh, foundations or concrete basement walls uh, to homes. Once the contractor is done with all the concrete work and the uh, first layer of pavement, he's gonna be starting the restoration. Once that curb is in 
anytime after that curb is in, is kind of a good window to be able to get back in there and reinstall your irrigation system if you have irrigation systems. The contractor will place topsoil and kind of work around your irrigation system. If you're unable to get it before the topsoil placement, you can still place it, place your irrigation or dog fences after the topsoil is placed. It's, it'll be really easy to dig in, I'll say, at that point in time and position it how you want. And then the contractor usually follows his topsoil placement by a day or two uh, with placing the seed and uh, hydro mulch. So it'll be like a, a kind of a green appearance material that they'll put over the top of the topsoil. In the bottom right picture is a awesome example of what restoration can look like. Um, I'll say this is best case scenario in the lower right. This is not what you're typically gonna see from the restoration and seeding operations. Uh, this particular one was probably done with just the right conditions as far as maybe the, it's irrig irrigated by the homeowner. Um, maybe it was done at the right time of year where we had lots of good moisture in the air. Typically the restoration is gonna have some spots in it, similar to what you saw in the video. Uh, there is a responsibility of the contractor to get a certain amount of coverage. So there is an inspection that's done on the restoration. Typically that inspection is done about 30 days or longer beyond when the seed is initially placed. So the contractor does have some time to get that restoration and grass to get established. If you live in one of the phases that are going to be completed real late in the year, there is the potential that the seed doesn't come up yet this fall. Um, this project is going to stretch over the course of the entire summer. So if that is the case, there will be an inspection the following spring to review the restoration. A couple examples of the paving operation. Once the pavement's placed, there's about a 30 minute window where you won't be able to drive over it. That's from when it gets placed right out, right behind the paver. The rolling operation that follows the paver um, is a moving operation that'll compact that pavement to a point where you'll be able to drive over it as long as you're driving your vehicles straight and not cranking your steel wheel or making any sharp turns. If you make any sharp turns, you're gonna dig into the asphalt pavement and make a little scuff. Um, here's an example of a truck that did what you should not do. Um, this actually happened on a cul-de-sac. It was a garbage truck on garbage day, trying to get back in there and get garbage cans. Um, so this is kind of worst case scenario. Uh, the contractor is aware of what days are garbage days and we generally do not pave on those days. Um, your garbage service will continue as it normally does. Um, if you're in one of the areas where the utility work is happening right in front of your house during garbage day, uh, lots of times we will work with the garbage, uh, the contractors move the garbage cans to a spot where they can get them and get that picked up. Once the pavement is removed, if you look at the upper right picture, you can kind of see this is a driveway um, that the homeowner is able to access in and out of, but there is a lip along the front edge of the curb where the pavement is removed. So the contractor went and put some gravel to ramp up that lip so you can still get in and out of your driveway and maintain access to your home. All right, so we're just gonna go over some frequently asked questions. I'm sure a lot of you are sitting there with some questions and uh, we'll get back to um, having an open question and answer session here after this, but hopefully uh, this slide, the next few slides will answer a lot of the questions here. So um, the schedule is, uh, the work on Meadowood is scheduled to begin next week. Um, and like Jeff had said, we've, we've met with a lot of those residents and given them notification and they have door hangers. So um, they're aware that construction is beginning. Um, and this says May 4th for Upper Afton Road that it was actually recently changed to May 6th, uh, which is on a Monday. Um, so May 6th, the Upper Afton Road will be closed uh, in that Phase A portion. Um, and right now we're expecting Meadowwood to be wrapped up sometime in July, um, and then Upper Afton Road will be done in October, uh, likely early October. Um, so this is probably the best case scenario. This all depends on um, how much weather days we get and, um, you know, the, the conditions that we get in the field when you're digging down, you know, 12, 15 feet, sometimes you don't really know what you're going to run into. So um, we'll, we'll work the best we can to, to get it done as fast as we can and we'll notify of any uh, schedule changes, but just understand that likely there's going to be um, some changes that uh, the best way to find out about those is signing up for InTouch. Um, the street will be, um, Meadowwood Drive will have some local closures uh, where the storm sewer is getting replaced. 
Um, and the other streets along Meadow, in the Meadowood area will remain open. Um, Upper Afton Road, like I said, we'll have some localized closer, closures. Um, we're doing it in four phases, so um, it'll be closed about you know, a quarter at a time. Um, and the signs that are on Upper Afton Road that I'm hoping most of you have seen, um, they'll notify of the closures and, and that sort of thing. Um, the contractor's working hours, so they'll work 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. So um, they're, they're going to be hitting it hard. There's a lot of work that needs to get done here, and, and they'll be working 12 hours most days and six days most weeks. So um, do expect that uh, you're going to see the, the construction vehicles quite a bit this summer. Um, the noise ordinance does allow for us to start a little earlier and end a little bit later, um, and that'll occasionally happen um, depending on kind of how the, the construction phasing and schedule is going. Um, if they've got, you know, an hour or two of work left, then um, sometimes we'll, we'll let them go a little bit later. Um, but they will seal any hole that they have uh, before they, they finish up work um, for the day. Uh, driveway access, so like I said, there's, there's going to be some significant work here, and there will be times where you won't have driveway access if you live along Upper Afton Road or if you're in that storm sewer replacement um, in Meadowood. Um, or if you have your... Uh, your curb replaced in front of your house, if you have spot curb replaced, if you have uh, those marks on your driveway, there will be some times where you won't have access. Um, and that's something that will be communicated via the door hanger. So those are going to have the, the best information. So um, some of the houses on Upper Afton Road, we're not going to get to you for a few months. So it's, it's going to be impossible to tell you exactly when you won't have access. But just to understand, there's going to be some days where you, you won't have access to your house. Um, and we will work with you to um, or you won't have access to your driveway. You'll have access to your house, and we'll work with you to, to let you know um, as, uh, the best way to, to access um, the roads. Uh, garbage and mail service, like uh, Jeff was saying, um, those um, services have been notified. Um, they're aware of the construction that's going to be going on, and, and the contractor will work with you, and uh, the post office will work um, with our consultant, and, and they'll have temporary mailboxes set up um, so you'll be able to receive your mail. Um, the garbage will still get picked up. Uh, the school buses uh, will still be able to get in and out. We're, uh, we're working with the school district right now to, to figure out kind of the school bus routing, but um, that'll all be um, taken care of in this uh, phasing process. Um, irrigation system, so this is the big one. So on uh, Upper Afton Road where we have full curb replacement, uh, there's going to be three to five feet that's beyond the curb. Uh, where we will need the residents to remove any uh, of their own utilities. So that would be like uh, sprinkler systems, dog fences, any landscaping they have. Um, that's the resident's responsibility to uh, move those. Um, if, there, if anything is damaged, uh, that's right off the curb. Uh, it won't be replaced and it won't be reimbursed. Um, so uh, we, we ask the residents to um, help us and uh, they're, they're responsible for uh, removing that. If, if you want, um, you can certainly let the, a lot of times they'll just remove the heads um, and they'll let the, the lines get damaged. Uh, you know, you, you can do things like that. You can talk to your irrigation company and see what they'd prefer. Um, but just understand that the city is not responsible for any damage that's caused to irrigation or dog fences that's uh, right off the curb within the city's right of way. Um, if you have any questions as far as is this going to be impacted, the hotline's probably the best way because a lot of times it's something that you kind of have to be on site to know. Um, turf restoration, so the contractor is responsible for um, restoring the turf. Um, a lot of times what's acceptable to them is not always acceptable to the residents, so um, we do ask that you help out a little bit and, and go ahead and, and water and um, do some weed weeding in that area um, because you know, it's, it's a challenge for them in these projects to, to get the turf to a level that a lot of the residents deem adequate. So. Um, any help you can get is, is going to help get the, the lawn to where I'm sure a lot of you want it. Um, there will be some crosswalk signs that are going to be removed. Um, they're, they're not in uh, what we would consider safe spots, um, so we're going to remove them and um, we will uh, encourage people to cross at the other spots that are a little bit safer. Um, we'll be re, uh, repaving the trail, um, so there will be some times where that trail is going to be closed um, per, by the phase. So. Um, that'll be done about a quarter at a time as well. Um, and the contractor will not be replacing residential driveways. Um, we asked them and um, their, uh, their equipment is more set up for the large scale street projects rather than you know, the smaller driveways. So 
Um, we did ask and um, they, they decided not to do it for this project. Um, as far as expectations for next year, um, there's likely going to be some cracking. Um, and that's expected when, you know, uh, the state, we have such extreme high and low temperatures that um, the, the asphalt pavement is, is uh, you know, it, it, grow, it expands and shrinks and, and that's what causes cracking. So we're going to get some cracking and we'll go out there next year and, and we'll seal those. Uh, but just do uh, understand that uh, if you see a crack in front of your house next year that uh, the pavement's not defective. It's, uh, it's just something that happens when you live in a state like Minnesota. Um, and so finally, we have some other construction projects that I'm sure you're all aware of, but we just wanted to give you all a heads up as far as what else is going on in the city of Woodbury this year. So uh, the Marsh Creek area um, is all getting rehabilitated. Um, so that's a, a pavement surface rehabilitation. So those roads are going to re remain open. There's not a lot of utility work in there. Um, Bailey Road, that's a Washington County project. So if you're looking for information on the, the county projects or MnDOT projects, go to this link below. Um, again, this uh, presentation is going to be posted to the, the road rehab website, so you can get this link from there. Um, but the Bailey, the Bailey Road and Bailey Furniture Road, so this Bailey Road between Pioneer Drive and Woodbury Drive, uh, that's going to have some construction on it, and there's going to be uh, a handful of weekend closures. Right now, they're, they're expecting three to four weekend closures. Um, so if you want to be updated on that project, um, that will be uh, via the, the county's website. Um, the Radio Drive pedestrian bridge, so there's going to be a pedestrian bridge that's going to be put up over I-94. That's going to be connecting um, Woodbury with Oakdale. Um, and again, that information can be found on the, the county's website. And then finally, the Radio Drive will have a trail extension that's going to be uh, between Valley Creek and uh, Afton and Pioneer Road there, so kind of right in front of where we're at. They're going to uh, redo some of the trails, and then they're going to add a trail that's in front of the uh, uh, Washington County Government Center and uh, the public work or public safety building for the, the city. And then finally, I'm sure most of you are aware of the MnDOT, I-94, 494, 694 project that's going on right now. Um, and again, more information can be found uh, at that link below. That'll send you to the MnDOT site where they'll have the best information for that project. <laughs>